In this video, we will review over the anatomy of the common freshwater clam. The clam is in the kingdom Animalia, phylum mollusca. The phylum mollusca is second only to arthropods in number of species. The group is typically unsegmented and has a soft body with a mantle. The mantle secretes a calcareous shell. They are coelomates, but the coelome has been reduced to the pericardium, which is the heart cavity and the gonadal cavities. The main body cavity is called the hemocele, and except for the cephalopods, the group possesses an open circulatory system. The blood returns to the heart through the, the hemocele, and the body of the mollusk is divided into three regions, the head, foot, and visceral mass. Now, when we look at the clam, the clam is in the class bivalvia or polysopoda. This class would include the clam, the oyster, mollusk, uh, mussels, scallops. They typically are unsegmented soft bodies. They are characteristic of this particular phylum. Uh, the body is enclosed by two calcium carbonate shells that are hinged dorsally, and the body is laterally compressed and the foot wedge-shaped, and this is where it gets the name polysopoda, which means hatchet foot. All mollusks, including the clam, exhibit bilateral symmetry, in which the animal can be divided into an equal mirror image called a sagittal plane. Now, uh, because the outer shell of the clam does not reveal its body regions, its symmetry can be confusing. So what you need to do is to look at the hump or the umbo to orientate the body. In addition to the symmetry, um, it's also important that you know the following terms. The anterior is going to be uh, towards the head region. Posterior will be towards the tail region. Dorsal will be the upper surface and ventral will be the bottom surface. Now let's begin by looking at the external features of the clam shell. The clam is hinged along the dorsal surface right in this area here by a tough elastic structure called a hinge ligament. The outside of the shell is nice and dark and the dark color is due to a thin outer layer of the shell, the periostracum. Near this hinge ligament we will see a um, an outer dorsal elevation known as the umbo. This represents the oldest part of the shell and it's located at the anterior end of the valve. Also you'll notice the growth lines radiating out from the shell and they can be just seen radiating from the umbo. Now with regard to the inner surface of the clam shell, Note these cardinal teeth, also known as hinged teeth, along this inner dorsal margin of the shell. Uh, these teeth interlock with the other valve to help lock the valve together. They will also have uh, large round muscular scars, and they're going to be located at that, the, both the anterior and the posterior of the shell. These scars mark the point of attachment of the anterior and posterior adductor muscles which close the valve and hold it closed. Now we'll also see some other smaller scars located on the shell as well. These smaller muscle scars around the anterior adductor muscle, um, they mark the attachment of muscles which extend and retract the foot from the uh, clam shell. Now along this ventral surface in this area here, you're going to see a line that connects the anterior and posterior adductor muscle scars. This is the paleo line, and it marks the place of attachment of the mantle of the clam to the shell. This pearly uh, inner covering of the shell is called the nacreous or mother of pearl layer. So that as we review over the clam shell, the outer dark cover is called the periostracum and it's typically composed of a protein called conchylin and this acts as a protective surface to repel erosion and any kind of ectoparasitism. The middle layer is composed of calcium carbonate and that inner mother of pearl layer is also made up of calcium carbonate but it has a thinner matrix structure with it and it's going to be this inner matrix thinner structure that gives it that iridescence pearl like uh, appearance. Now as we begin the general anatomy of the clam the first thing we want to notice is this thin mantle located in this area right there, and it's next to the shell that surrounds the body. 
Now between the lobes of the mantle and the body is the mantle cavity. At the posterior of the mantle, we're going to see two siphons, the in-current and the ex-current siphons. And this is where water can pass into and out of the mantle cavity. Now right here, we can see the ventral part of the visceral mass extending anteriorly as the wedge-shaped foot, and that's where we get the polysipoda name. The foot is used for burrowing into the substrate. Then we can find these thin leaf-like gills that are located on either side of the body. Uh, both the gills and the mantle will serve as respiratory structures. Now as water is circulated through the gills, food is trapped in the mucus which covers the gill surfaces. The mucus and the particles of food are then conducted along the ciliary tract to the mouth, which is located between the two pairs of flap-like labial palps that we'll see in a future slide. The palps will look like small gills, and they function to sort the food from the material, such as silt and, and any sand particles, and then they will reject the silt and the sand particles. And then the food will be transferred to the mouth by the labial palps. And so right here we can see one of the labial palps that helps with that uh, intake of food into the clam. Now we're going to take our scalpel and we're going to come right along here and we're going to start making an incision, moving backwards. We're going to remove the gills out of the way and we're just going to take this, remove this backwards, and we're going to open up this area right here so we can see some additional internal uh, structures of the clam. Now just to orientate ourselves, we do have that lower gill, but the upper gill has been uh, removed. And here was the foot area, and we could have dissected this on straight back, but here on this one, we've just uh, opened up this area right here. And this is going to allow us to see some of those internal organs associated with the clam. Now the first thing we want you to note is right in this area right there, that coiled intestines, and that's going to lead from the stomach, which appears as a larger cavity. So anywhere where we see this, this larger opening cavity, that's going to be the stomach, and then the smaller opening tubes would be the intestine. The stomach is going to be surrounded by a pair of digestive glands, and they usually will appear green in color. The lighter color material that you're looking at between the intestines um, is going to be the gonads. Now one surprising uh, fact about the mollusk is that they are dioecious, which means that they have uh, the male and female structures located on separate individuals. And while they are dioecious, we're not going to be able to differentiate any of these gonad um, uh, glands right in this area to tell whether we have a male or a female uh, individual. So that the mollusks have a complete digestive system since they have both a mouth and an anus. They have an open circulatory system and right here we can see that very simple little heart with the ostium. However, they do not have uh, arteries and veins, therefore it would be an open circulatory system. Uh, respiration is by the use of the gills, and do remember that sometimes the gills will be called the tenidia. They are filter feeders, and um, that really wraps up the anatomy of the clam.